it was very much, you know, at first there was a bit of a, a little bit of this going on, but yeah, it, you know, we got that out of our system. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time on the channel, hit subscribe right now. I will make you me. Despise my reality. You will never break. Taylor, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. So let's strike the iron while it's hot. Uh, we've got the second album already. Um, however, a good amount of this material was already written a while ago, correct? Uh, yeah, so when we first started, um, we had 14 songs written and uh, nine of those we thought fit a certain mold that sounded like what we wanted album one to be. Yeah. And then there were five that we didn't want to scrap because they were just as strong, but we we're like, these kind of sound like a little more advanced or adventurous. So uh, okay. we kept them for album two and then um, they, you know, kind of shaped how number two would sound and then uh, we wrote four other songs right yeah, after yeah. we got back from our first tour because we were all fired up you could not escape me. in a funny way recycled hate is more than just the title of a song <laughs> well yeah a little bit it was kind of a little you know, we were clever with a couple titles on this uh, these two records, but yeah, I, I want to come back to that later on um, to, to some of the, the the meanings behind titles and lyrics for sure. Um, now, uh, album number two, as you say. Um, before we get into the album and the music and the direction of the band, uh, we do see you know well we see parts of the of the two cover arts behind you there. Um, so. What's been clear now on this second album is that there's also a proper mascot uh, uh, for the band. So who is he? What can you tell me about him? Uh, well, that was sort of unintentional. Okay. Um, the first album, Jeremy had the concept for the guy, you know, walking on the bodies up the stairs and stuff. And uh, Dan just kind of went with it and it took off into this like amazing amazing place and he sent us the first draft and we were like whoa holy crap. so that, you know that's that's why he earned his nickname babe ruth because we were like dude you knocked it out of the park like 100 yeah, percent and we yeah, said yeah. We're, we're not usually wowed like that and it was nice to be like fully just blown away yeah, yeah, yeah. um and that guy on the cover and his reflection on rap god just became like such a it, w it was sort of an unintentional mascot. Everybody was like, well, is he the rat god? And it's like, well, it's, you know, what do you think yeah. it is? And, uh, yeah, yeah. He just kind of became like everybody's, everybody knows that shitty person that, you know, is just scum of the earth and, you know, succubus and draining life from everybody and all that stuff. So yeah, he yeah, kind yeah. of represented that. And then on the second album, we were like, well, we want to have Dan do the artwork again for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We said, well, there's already five songs from the same time period, so why not bring back the Rat God character, but make him more sinister, more further along in the path of destruction and, you know, wherever he's headed and, you know, give him a new environment to be in too. So that's where it's kind of more an outside of whatever building or castle or, you know, who knows what, yeah, what yeah, that yeah, building yeah, yeah. Like. So. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was, I wanted to ask if it was like meant to be the same building, like because you mentioned it on the first album. He's walking up a stairs made of bodies. Now we see that the building he's standing at and dragging a little, a few more, let's call them bricks, uh, towards is, uh, is is completely made out of bodies. So yeah, cool, awesome. Yeah. Well, and and obviously, as also with some of the color schemes that we see. Um, uh, more than a few nods back to you know classic uh, first wave death metal, uh, oh, late yeah. 80s, early 90s, um, which is a good segue to then maybe also the music, right? Because it's not just the artwork; it's also the music uh, in human condition, which is mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna describe it as like a groovy and melodic old school death metal, um, and it just feels like it's a celebration of everything that was great about the late 80s and early 90s. Is that kind of what? Yeah, I mean that's more or less what we were going for. I mean, when we wrote the music, obviously it was supposed to be a Massacre album, but Massacre was known for that, you know, kind of simplistic 
caveman thrash death metal stuff you know no blast beats or any like crazy technical stuff and uh <clears throat> yeah so that's what we were going for and we just kind of were trying to write what we would want to hear in a you know late 80s early 90s death metal yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, thing. and jeremy plays with such groove naturally and between him and terry the rhythm section just has like a such a unique character for this band All the big bands are good because they have good groove that's, you know, accessible and you could tap your foot to and bob your head to. Exactly. There's a there's a quality in simplicity, to your point. It doesn't always have to be at a million miles per hour and and and, and ten thousand guitar solos and, and so on. Um, yeah. It, it, yeah, it, we, the have whole... no, we have other bands for that stuff. <laughs> okay, so that's a good point. So here's here's a question that I have to ask you, because um, <laughs> Not just you, but everybody in this band is in a million other projects and bands and, 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 and involved in different capacities in so many things. Now, you guys released the first album. You were able to go tour, as you said. Um, you were pumped up after the tour to get back into you know, finishing the second album. Um, the, the other bands that you're all part of, they're not the most unimportant bands themselves. Um, <laughs> which means that they come with their schedules with their you know expectations so is it like you know trying to get out as much in human condition as you can right now and then reality might hit you and okay now we have to put this on pause for a while or you know um, i think when we started we initially said well you know we decide once we decided yeah let's make this a real band and you know mm -hmm. do what we can to make it as real as possible yeah um we all knew that this was before i joined deicide but terry was still doing obituary and jeremy was still doing venom inc and he does sound for a ton of bands as well so yeah we knew <clears throat> that we would be fitting inhuman in between everybody else's schedule so it wasn't necessarily like let's try and do this before you know the other bands get busy it was just well does anybody have anything in september no okay cool let's book a quick little tour and then Hey, does anybody have anything in January? Okay, cool. You know, Terry is like a machine. He's been on tour for like the last eight months, basically nonstop. You know, he's home for two days with obituary and then goes out with us and then he's back and then he's doing another obituary run. And So I think um, we did want to get this album out quicker because we kind of wanted to one, two punch it, you know, yeah. while the, while the buzz is still pretty hot. And, uh, you know, with the material being relevant to the first album as well, we thought, well, For there's sure. no sense waiting, you know, three years to put out that album, so. I think we'll just try and fit as many shows or tours in as we can. I mean, I know it's only gonna get crazier from here for everybody's schedule. Oh, yeah. New Venom Inc. album, new obituary album on the way. Eventually there's another DSI album on the way. So it'll be yeah. it'll be crazy, but we're just trying to do as much as we can while okay. we have the time. But so I do hear you say that this is in no way over. Like <laughs> this is this is a start and we should expect at some point, whenever the stars align again uh, for enough time, there is going to be a third album and so on. Oh yeah, absolutely. I already have too many riffs to start with, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure Terry has handfuls of riffs as well, so. Yeah, we'll probably, we'll probably wait a year or so. I mean, if it were up to me, I'd have three more albums out this year, but <laughs> gotta wait a little bit. Now that you've had the time to kind of digest the whole shitty situation that happened and you've been able to take something that was created for initially for something else turn it into something new get a lot of great you know feedback on that and and start this whole new chapter is that then for you everything that happened with massacre in the past and that shitty situation is that now a closed chapter for you and you're just looking ahead yeah i think it was a closed chapter i mean as soon as we started the band really it was it was like a weight off the shoulders situation. Yeah. 
I still talk to my quarters. I just talked to him this morning, actually, right before this. Um, so, you know, I wish those guys luck. And I did have a great time when we were doing it. And yeah. it was fun till it wasn't. That's all I'll say. Um, but, yeah, it was it was very much, you know, at first there was a bit of a little bit of this going on. But, yeah, it, you know, we got that out of our system. And it's been, you know, it's been such a positive group with Terry and uh, it's just been such a fun yeah there's been like no, no stressors involved which has been great so good it was good. it's basically been positive since it was the band was announced so yeah 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 okay great now this this album is um, because you know apart from playing in all these bands and supporting so many bands you're not even you're, you're you're already so busy and then on top of that this is this album came out on your own label and um, Listenable Insanity Records. You've supported mm -hmm. a couple of other bands on that label uh, over the last years. I think that you started what in 2017, something like that. Uh, well, actually, Jeremy and I started it in I think 2015, uh, oh, okay. basically just to put out our own side projects because we had so many. We yeah. wanted to put it on the label, um, <clears throat> so we did, we just put out a couple like silly grindcore albums of our yeah, side yeah. projects, and then. Our first real release was a uh, Gore Gang EP that we put out last April. And then uh, last Rat God was really our first big yeah. you know, international release. So um, we've just been doing our own releases for now, just because that, you know, keeps us plenty busy. Um, at some point, I'm sure we'll try and put out other bands. But, yeah. you know, like I said, we have 100 bands. So <laughs> we'll probably be busy for, you know, the next few years with our own oh, stuff. Oh, for sure. Is that, is, that an, is that an area of the business that you want to explore more of, though? Is that something that's on your bucket list? or? Um, it's not really on my bucket list. I think it kind of more or less came about as, well, I don't want anybody else to screw it up, or we didn't yeah. want anybody else to screw anything up, or, you know, if something goes wrong, we want to be responsible and, right. you know, learn from it, and we want to be able to put our finances where we think it's important, and... So it kind of just fell into our laps, and you know, I, do I enjoy emailing distros in Europe all the time? Not really, but <laughs> you know, it's it's nice that the people in this band we all have our roles and we all yeah. just do what we have to do, and the band just moves forward, and it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you say, yeah, you don't necessarily enjoy it the most having to work with all you know that side of business but when you then see that you know so many people do want to pick you up and 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 agencies want to work with you and the fans also react really positively to it that must have felt really good too in where, where you're like in this position where you're kind of owning it end to end um which is a, a, a unique situation for an artist to be in um and and, and getting that response um is is that is that better than getting any you know great review on 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 one of the legendary bands that you've played with? Uh, yeah, I think this band has been the most rewarding in its own way because it started from such a negative like turmoil and then spawned into this great situation. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me and. Uh, I think it was especially cool because we did it all ourselves and yeah um like i said i don't not enjoy the label side of it um i actually really do enjoy most of it like the merch design and oh, what what can we put in the box set this time and oh we should get these kind of boxes made and you know yeah, yeah i love yeah. all that stuff but um yeah it's definitely been very rewarding um I mean, playing in, in all the other bands that I've played in has obviously been an honor and is totally wild, but there's a certain aspect about this that's pretty cool because it's totally DIY, you know, yeah. basically akin to like, I guess, tape trading more or less. Like, hey, here's here's our album if you want it. Here's our address, you know, buy it from us or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it has a, it has a pretty unique majesty to it. What can you already share with everyone about, you know, upcoming plans for, for more live shows and promotion of this album? Um, we have a tour with Deicide 
in August and September in the U.S. and Canada. So I'll be doing double duty on that tour. Um, D sides doing Legion, the Legion album start to finish. So that'll be a pretty special tour. And uh, Cataclysm is also on the bill. Um, so we'll be doing that. And then we don't really have anything planned after. Um, these days, everything is so up in the air. So it's sort of yeah. difficult to plan in advance. But um, I'm sure if something pops up, we'll try and sneak a show or a tour in somewhere. Or, you know, who knows, maybe an EP or a surprise this or that. I don't know. We'll yeah, we'll, yeah, yeah. We're always trying to do something. So Yeah, yeah. it's clear to see how excited you are for this project then. Uh, how much energy you, you have and I wish you and your your physique all the all the rest and support it needs for doing double duty for a whole tour because yeah. that's gonna be uh you're gonna you're gonna have arms this big <laughs> after that tour I'm yeah. sure awesome well Taylor, Jeremy's, oh. Jeremy will be doing triple duty on that tour um, because he's singing with Inhuman <laughs> and then he's doing sound for Cataclysm and Deicide. Yeah. So his ears are going to be <laughs> big, and, big and buff and my arms will be big. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, can't wait for that. I hope to see you guys on that tour when you come through Canada. Uh, Taylor, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Uh, yeah. I had a lot of fun Thanks already with the new album. Uh, I've had the chance to listen to every song many, many times. Oh, and um, uh, it's going to come out July 15, if I remember correctly. Yep. So uh, just a few more weeks and um, everybody can enjoy that album as much as I'm already doing today. Uh, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you on a stage this summer. Yeah, thanks for having me. Cheers. Awesome. You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.